I'm Tony Northrup, a professional photographer and huge Apple fanboy, and I am completely angry about the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max camera launches because there's so much nonsense in there. Apple is completely misleading you about things. I'm going to tell you the four ways that the iPhone 15 Pro launch misled you, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Here, first look at my Instagram. It looks like everybody's Instagram. It's got my most recent work, not my best work, at the top. And when you get to the bottom, it has the nerve to suggest other photographers. Now, look at my Squarespace. This shows my best work. I control the colors, the font, the layout, the entire brand. I get my own custom domain name, something that sounds professional along with custom email addresses so I'm not at gmail.com anymore. Look, I have a store where I could sell prints and automatically ship them out through my ship station. You can take appointments from clients. You could share a bunch of files with your clients. View detailed analytics so you can understand your customer and build your business. Get started at squarespace.com slash Tony. It's completely free to try out. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Okay, number one of the four ways I am so mad about the iPhone 15 launch. Apple had the nerve to show this slide talking about seven lenses. Okay, this is my iPhone 14 Pro Max, but trust me, it's actually better than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'll show you why. Three lenses, right? Not seven lenses. So where do they get the other imaginary four lenses? Just by cropping. The macro is a crop of the ultra wide lens. It crops it from about 12 megapixels to about three megapixels. The 13 millimeter lens is an actual ultra wide lens. Good, the 24 millimeter actual physical lens. 28, 35, 48, totally made up. But why seven lenses? I don't even get it. They're just cropping. Why not make a hundred different lenses? Because literally you can just go like that and zoom to whatever you want. I don't need to start at a different focal length with lower megapixels. From a practical standpoint, this makes no sense. But from a marketing standpoint, this makes sense because other camera manufacturers have more lenses. So now Apple is showing things like this and essentially creating confusion and making you think that they have more lenses than anybody else when they absolutely do not. Complaint number two, I have been begging Apple for a super telephoto lens in the iPhone for a long time. Why? Because I test cameras like the Samsung S23 Ultra with its amazing telephoto lens, and I would love to be able to do that. And take a picture of these faraway houses as well, just so we can zoom in and see. I'm just zooming in three times. Oh yeah, that's all you can zoom in, but I have a 10 times zoom, I, so I mean, I'm gonna zoom in that I much. can zoom in more. Look at these houses in the distance on the Samsung. You can see the individual boards in the house, the bricks on the chimney. This is what a smartphone telephoto should be. Apple should be embarrassed that they keep shipping out the same old 70 millimeter lens. And you'd think I'd be happy now, right? Because Apple put 120 millimeter equivalent lens in the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but here's why I'm mad. They replaced the existing 77 millimeter lens with 120 millimeter lens. So when I get my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I decide to zoom in to 77 millimeters, it will just be cropping the original 24 millimeter lens and that will produce about 1.1 megapixel images. In other words, terrible images. And I can prove it to you because I'll just use my iPhone 14 Pro Max and I will zoom into 77 millimeters and then zoom back a little bit to 76 millimeters. And you can see the side-by-side -side results and just how bad it is to crop really deep. Apple wants you to think you can crop super far because they talk about a 48 megapixel. So I'll talk about that in a second. And it's complete nonsense. You get garbage results. More reach is better. But Apple has sacrificed the incredibly useful range from 77 millimeters to 120 millimeters dramatically. And that trade-off is not worth it in the way that I shoot and in the way that everybody else shoots. If you get an iPhone 15 Pro Max and you end up zooming into about 115 millimeters, just shy of that 122 millimeters, the resulting image will have about 0.5 megapixels of detail. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? I'm not. I would prefer the 77 millimeter lens. Well, I would prefer to have both, but they didn't give me that option. But I like the bigger screen on the Pro Max models, but I want the camera from just the Pro models. So now you had to choose between ruining most of your medium telephoto work by getting a 15 Pro Max, or you have to go for the smaller screen. Oh, but what do I know? The Apple engineers must know what they're doing, right? They're obviously super smart. 
and they are. This is a marketing driven decision. They technically fulfilled the requirements that would allow them to market a five times zoom, but they didn't give you better image quality through most of that zoom range. They give you way worse image quality. And that is absurd. Reason number three I'm at is bloated files. Now it was bad when the iPhone 14 pro launched and they advertised a 48 megapixel sensor. We did a big comparison from 13 to 14 and I was hoping to see more detail and we really didn't. It's not there. And this has been true of every quad pixel sensor that we've tested. Why? Because quad pixel is marketing nonsense. They take a regular pixel in a camera sensor and just cut it in half both ways. So now it's four little pixels, but they don't have separate color information. The 48 megapixels was so meaningless, they wouldn't even give you that by default. You would have to turn on raw processing. They didn't want to make the camera slow by processing unnecessarily large files. So they just threw away that fake resolution until now. Now the default image size is 24 megapixels, but they're still essentially using a 12 megapixel sensor. So the rest of it is just upscaled. Why would they do that? Why would they suddenly make files twice as burdensome, twice as much storage, twice as much processing? It, it's the storage part right here. Take a look at Apple's revenue and you can see for the first time in almost 20 years, their revenue is dropping. Apple is making less money. <laughs> you see that big spike there? That's their big iPhone launch. And it's not as exciting as it used to be. Those long lines are not there anymore because these are not compelling. So Apple doesn't want to throw a bunch of money into R&D and innovation anymore, but they've got a better idea. They will sell you more iCloud storage. I pay 10 bucks a month for my iCloud storage. And honestly, it's brilliant. I take a picture, it's synchronized to the cloud. I can access it from my Mac. If my phone gets destroyed or stolen, I can access all of my pictures. I have real time backups. So this is a huge moneymaker, $120 a year for me until they raise their prices for the rest of my life and the rest of your life. But what if they could make more? Well, they can. All they have to do is increase the file sizes. So they take a 12 megapixel image and now upscale it to 24 megapixels. And that is meaningless because if you wanted to upscale it, you could just upscale it while you were viewing the image, right? You don't need to proactively upscale it and then store the made up extra megapixels permanently, but that works out great if you are charging for storage. The number four reason I'm pissed at Apple is so much marketing bullshit. Take a look at this slide where they compare the new 120 millimeter lens in an iPhone to a physical 120 millimeter lens. Does this seem right to you? It's not right. 120 millimeters is 4.7 inches and obviously they didn't fit anything 4.7 inches into this right now. Okay, they use a tetra prism thing which bounces light around four times, kind of like those old mirror telephoto lenses. And okay, that's a decent way to make something smaller, except the lens they show, a 120 millimeter f2.8 full frame lens would gather 256 times more light. For the fellow photographers, that is eight stops more light. That is a dramatic difference. So they put the focal length into full frame terms but they didn't put the aperture into full frame terms. They advertise it exclusively as a 120 millimeter F2.8 lens. And in fact, I couldn't even find the physical measurement of the lens anywhere. I had to math it and I don't like mathing stuff and neither do you. So I'm not going to get into why this is deceptive, but you can watch this video sdp.io slash crop where I explain the whole thing. But in a nutshell, the aperture actually includes the focal length as part of the formula. And if you took third grade algebra at all, you know you can't change one side of an equation without changing the other. Physically, the lens is about 16 millimeter f2.8. The full frame equivalent would be 120 millimeters f21. And no photographer would want to pick up 120 millimeter f21 lens. Nobody would advertise having that because that sounds really, really bad. And that's why Apple simply decided to apply a conversion to one side of an equation, but not the other. It's like saying a car has a top speed of 155 miles an hour and goes from zero to 60 in two seconds, but the zero to 60 is in kilometers per hour, right? Now that's clever because it leads the consumer to believe that the zero to 60 would be in miles per hour since you just talked about miles in the associated measurement, except you're not technically lying. Like each half of it is true if you consider them completely separately, but in the context, placed together, 
it is clearly misleading and the results will show it. Subscribe and we will test it out. If you're curious about the full frame equivalents for the other lenses, the super wide is about a 13 millimeter f10 and the wide, the normal standard lens is about 24 millimeters f6.3. Now the Apple fanboys are mad at me, but the Android fanboys are saying, just come over to our side. Just get yourself a Samsung S23 Ultra. I can't do that because Apple essentially has a monopoly on my friends and family. The people closest to me, the most important things in my life are accessed exclusively through Apple. Now I actually switched to a Pixel and a Samsung S22 Ultra at different times. Both times my family had an intervention. They're like, you have to go back to iPhone. This sucks. Why? Well, for one, like group chats were awful. I made the whole thing green text. Sometimes in, like one out of four text messages simply seemed to get lost and never went through. Sometimes they would be delayed five minutes or a couple of hours. And you imagine eh, you're cracking jokes back and forth and your message doesn't send for hours. Live photos, airdrop, find my shared albums. There are so many proprietary things that Apple creates that hooks everybody in that I do not know a single person who uses Android. So maybe it's not a legal monopoly because technically there are other options, but I don't feel like I have a practical option and I'm a photographer. So the camera is the single most important part to me. And that's why I'm pissed at Apple. If you're gonna lock me in a system, do better. Do your best. Stop with the marketing nonsense designed to confuse people and get them to buy more things and actually produce better images. And if you want help, reach out Apple. I will be happy to help. I love imaging. I love iPhones and I love modern photography. And if you also do subscribe because we have tutorials, reviews, and be sure to check out our sponsor Squarespace, which makes amazing websites of any type, whether it's for your photography portfolio, your video reel, or any type of business or personal project. I have several different Squarespace websites because you want a different Squarespace website for things like portraits, for weddings, for commercial real estate photography. You don't need your clients to be digging through those things. Make separate brands that appeal to each separate target customer with their own domain names. So even if you have a Squarespace website, head back to squarespace.com slash Tony and create a site completely free. See how beautiful it is. Create a customized template that perfectly matches your style. Create your own logo, choose your fonts, choose your colors. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. And it's not one of those tricks where they take your credit card and you can't cancel. No credit card until you decide to sign up. Thanks Squarespace. Now in the comments, if you're pissed at me, tell me that's okay. If you think I'm wrong about something, tell me, or if there's something else that you're mad about with the iPhone, tell me.